So then we are back with more understandings from the time of the Second Tabernacle Services where we are using then the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of Yahweh then indicating for us the understanding of the time of the end. And then reading from Yerushiah the prophet there is the 61st chapter then the time of restoration and when we understand the restoration it can mean in a certain way but then understanding from the Creator's viewpoint there is another way of understanding time of restoration then we understand Abraham was then the friend of God and Abraham had two sons he had the first son with Hagar known as Ishmael then he had later the second son and then his son was Isaac so then understanding from the viewpoint of the Creator we understand the birthright and there are many areas of the scripture where we find then for instance Yaakov in the whole story of the goat's skin and then his mother involved with some sort of a scheme or then some sort of a deceitful plan of then stealing the birthright from Isa. Quite a bunch of junk. Absolutely invented story because the character of the Creator does not let any kind of a deceit be involved with his holy anointing. So let's evaluate what went on. It's very simple. Abraham came a point in his life where he was very frustrated in understanding. Sometimes when we want God to move in a certain way in our lives, people get frustrated. Then Abraham obviously he had these servants from Egypt because he had taken a detour because of the drought and then he went to Egypt and said uh, he had then his sister with him and truly she was Sarai was then his half sister but truly he was his wife then Pharaoh decided to take her as a wife and then Yahweh had to intervene because understand the deal was already made as far as Abraham was concerned she was gone he gave her an exchange you know for the benefits that the relationship established then from Abraham in Egypt was made and his wife was gone but then Yahweh had uh, reminded himself of his covenant and no 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 so then she very rapidly went back to her husband and then Pharaoh said, what is this that you have done? And the story up to this point is true. Then later came the first son. The first son came because Abraham was frustrated. There is no plot from wife, no schemes from the wife. Sarai tried to perpetuate some sort of coming of the promise there is nothing to do with it Abraham simply was frustrated after his departure of Egypt then at some point he went into Hagar and then she conceived she had the firstborn and there is no throwing out of Abraham's son with the mother it was made it up absolutely made it up what went on was the creator decided let the story fix itself so then he holded he then held back the womb of Sarah until the firstborn was an adult he was cared for he was very cared for as a son but then the understanding of Abraham is he was a pilgrim as Yahweh was a pilgrim and then Yahweh Yeshua was a pilgrim and this is what then Yahweh expects from his people they are pilgrims in this earth precisely what Yahweh Yeshua said so then Yitzhak came much later 
Later then, when the first son, Ishmael, was grown up, then he had taken his own route. Certain areas of the journey of Abraham, then the son when it was already adult, and then his mother was already of age, she decided to stay with the son. Then Abraham continued on his pilgrimage. And by this time then they had Yitzhak. It's not complicated understanding because there is a story of intrigue, story of lies, a story of then the wife trying to take over the understanding of the promise that it doesn't fit. Wives more important so coming from the first lineage from Abraham was a friend of God. Do you think she would have the courage to lie in his face? Absolutely not. The whole story was made it up later. Why? Because we find many centuries later than the five Megillas of Moses. Much later they wrote on paper and when Moshe wrote, he wrote properly. But then later because of the editing, people went to captivity and so on and so forth. A lot of these details were then placed aside and then they decide because the time they were living was so many deceits, people were so untruthful and they decided to have some literary activity in the midst of the scripture. So there was no intrigue in the tent. The first son then was born, he was then grown up, he was an adult. Then he went on his way and he had his mother with him. And Abraham had to continue on with his journey. Later then came Yitzhak. And there was no fight in the tent. Then Yitzhak grew up, then he had also family of his own. And then came the story of then Yaakov. Then Yitzhak, then having Isa, and then Isa then was then the person with the birthright, and he was a hunter. And then there it goes again, the wife being blamed for, because the wife has some sort of a scheme or a plan to take over then the birthright from the first son giving to the second. It's a bunch of junk. Absolutely not. What went on was Yisa was evil. And the word of the Creator through Yitzhak simply said when Yaakov entered over there to service him, he simply said very plainly, Yitzhak simply mentioned Yisa is evil. He is a person from the outside, he is very violent. And then he was not suited for the promise. Thus Yitzhak had taken then the understanding of giving then the promise to the other son because the other was evil. Can Yahweh then the true creator go through deceit to get his way? Absolutely not. He states right in front of the person. Why he's trying to weasel his way through the situation, trying to go in through deceit from a wife. Wives back then they wouldn't say a word contrary. Why are being blamed for? There is no reason. Simply, Yaakov went to the tent and came in the time where then the promise had to move on because Yitzhak was dying. And Yitzhak knew his first son was evil. Not suited then for the promise. And then came Yaakov and he received then the promise. Then Yitzhak was very angry because he knew then the promise was given to Yaakov. So then we begin to understand that it's much simpler than we ever thought. In this situation of, for instance, Job being a person then producing justices, it came a time in Job's life where Job does not exist, Job is Job, he was a scoundrel. He was so filthy rich, he began to boast on his own. 
Not even a Hashatan could take him on because he was so boastful and in scoundrel and then Yahweh had a protection around him but then Nahashatan had to go up to heaven to see what's going on. Either he's a scoundrel or the title is mine. And then Yahweh said, what is going on? Then they went in a conversation and they say, okay, so then filter him through. So there is no deceit. When we understand it from the time of Yahweh and his anointing, what he has done, there is no deceit in it, and he does not require any kind of a deceit. Whatsoever must be done from his side, he gets done. So then we understand time of a restoration. In Yerushiach, the 61st chapter, we understand there is the birthright. The birthright of the first son. But because the first son, in terms of Isa, was evil, then we understand Yaakov received the promise. But then the first son of Abraham was then Ishmael. And he was cared for as a son. He was never thrown out of the tent. He was never then mistreated. Hagar was never mistreated. She was treated properly. There were obviously some situations that were known from both of the wives because of the situation with Abraham. But do you think it was in front of him? Never. Absolutely never. We can understand then from both of the wives, then obviously would have sometimes some skirmishes, but not as the scripture then describes. Absolutely not. There was no reason. Because there was only a son, the son of Hagar. Sarah obviously was sad for a long time. But then when the first son was grown up, then he went on his way. Then she born then, obviously, Yitzhak. So time of restoration is per order of events. First comes then the son of Abraham, the first son. Understanding how is it going to take place at the end of time of the end per the understanding of the first son. And then we understand also in the land of Israel, in the Temple Mount, there is no third temple coming up. Absolutely no third temple. Whatsoever was constructed over there is going to be thrown around. The Messiah already warned, stay away from those people trying to make a name for themselves. What do we read then in the first understanding of Metichiahu, 24th chapter? The Messiah was in the temple, he should be in fact in the tabernacle of the desert because they are pilgrims. That is speaking of the covenant with Abraham. Abraham was a pilgrim. The whole nation of Yahweh then, through the promise given then to Abraham and Sarah, would be, they would be pilgrims. Abraham and the first wife, they should not be pilgrims, and they were not. Up to a point where then the first son was then adult, then Abraham moved on. So then the Messiah said in 24th chapter of Metichiahu, he said, Don't you understand these stones? They're going to be thrown around. There is no more temple. What you guys, you people need, must understand is you are pilgrims. It's not for you to be building buildings and then boasting yourselves. That's why then when we read the 8th chapter of Hebrews, or then Levites, 
tabernacle services, you understand the whole situation is this. We have then a priest who is then seated on the right hand of majesty. And then the Messiah is the minister of the sanctuary pitched on the desert for Elohim. So there is no third temple. The Messiah says, stay away from those. The Messiah is then explaining through Yohanan, he is a pilgrim. Because Abraham was a pilgrim. But then we understand there is then the first son, and the first son holds the birthright, holds the leadership. There is a promise. It came because Yahweh said to Abraham in Sarah, or Sarah. There was the promise. But the birthright is another situation. Time of restoration places the whole understanding in order. What the first sons of Abraham, they are going to let on a mountain or then on a temple mount, is going to be the simple tabernacle of the desert. They won't let any other building over there. You can be sure of it. Write it down and put a day time. Absolutely. Because the Messiah said he was the tabernacle. And whatsoever Moses told you to do and observe, these do and observe. This is what the authority of the first son of Abraham is going to let in the future. No temple, no building, no stone upon another. And the first son's lineage, they are going to give the order. They hold the authority on the Temple Mount anyway. And Yahweh is not going to be Involved with schemes. He is not for the scheme. He is not for the seat. He understands there is the first son. The first son has then the birthright. But then because Yahweh said his promise would come through then Abraham and Sarah. Then came Yitzhak later. But then, in the world, the people in charge over there, the Temple Mount, those are the sons of Ishmael. Like it or not. And they are going only to let the tabernacle of the desert. So whatsoever is there, they are trying to make this magnificent building and fancy menorah, fancy lyres, or musical instruments mixed with the trumpets and gold is a whole junk it's going to be thrown around this is what the Messiah said the Messiah was already informing the boys over there when they came out of the temple say you know what boys you are deceived let no man deceive you you boys already had taken me out of the temple should be in a tabernacle in the first place the Messiah did not like to teach in the temple because it was not the plan of Moshe. The Messiah always had this strange sensation when he was in the temple. He would be 100% comfortable in line with heaven if it was the tabernacle of the desert. But then the Messiah had to put up with it. And he already came out of the temple. He was already edgy. And then comes then the boys and trying to make him king. He said, let no man deceive you. You boys are deceived. Don't you understand? Every stone of this building is going to be thrown around. What he was trying to say, Abraham and the covenant requires pilgrimage. You people are pilgrims. 
And he explains then the later understanding of the Torah and its completion. There is no third temple. No, because God gave Israel the land. Understandable he gave the land. But they have to understand also there is a first son. The first son holds the authority. Besides the promise, the first son holds the authority. So if they are thinking on the people of Israel are overthrowing any kind of a government to try to rebel, it's a waste of time. The Creator gave the first son the authority. The second son merely had the promise. When the time comes, whatsoever the second anointing has done to promote themselves is going to be thrown around. The Messiah already explained, Boys, don't be deceived. Let no man deceive you. This building of yours where you make your name is going to be thrown around. So you have the answer. What they are trying to make themselves important because of a building is going to be thrown around. What's going to be in a Temple Mount is the Tabernacle of the Desert. And the utensils are already saved by Yirmiyahu the Prophet. Restoration was already provided the place, provided the plan, provided what to use. Yirmiyahu then saved in a chamber whatsoever was then required for the restoration period. And this junk of then Prime Minister of Israel, our President, Pope, and whatever else, hell, Satan, whosoever, demons coming around and trying to make a novel out of it, they are wrong. Satan, the Hashatan, Pope, our President, Prime Minister of Israel, they're going to get out of there very fast when the time comes. And what the first son's lineage is going to say, put there only the tabernacle of the desert. And there is no power of the universe that can change this. Please stay tuned, much more coming up. It's much simpler than we ever thought.